it's been a uh, it's been an interesting last week. As many of you know, I reviewed the Tecton Troubadour, the speaker right here. It's turned backwards and upside down right now, but you'll see why. Eh, and I dropped it about a week and a couple days ago. And it's just been crazy ever since. The review was actually pretty even keel. It wasn't even negative. Like I've gone pretty hard at manufacturers from crappy products before. And honestly, the speaker is good. Well, I mean, maybe not great, but it's it's a decent speaker, a thousand bucks a pair. I didn't really have any serious complaints about it. So with that said, I'm going to actually just provide you with the same subjective review that I provided you with in the last video, because I don't want anybody to say that anything changed or my ideas changed based on this whole travesty that Eric Alexander at Tecton has kickstarted. Now, I've given this a lot of thought about how I want to go about making this video, and the only way that I'll be able to sleep at night is to just be honest, but not be a dick. And in doing so, I think what makes the most sense is to share some of the email discourse so there are no questions about what happened. And then I'm going to run you through a couple little tests. Then I'm going to play my subjective evaluation from my previous review uh, because when I listened to these speakers with these little feet on versus with the feet off the last time, I didn't hear anything. And even doing blind ABX testing between the two, one with the feet out and the other one with the feet in, I mean, maybe I heard some difference in bass, but gosh, I, I knew what I was listening for. So I can't say that, you know, honestly. So I'm just going to play you back the same subjective. That way nobody has any complaints about any of that. And again, thought it was a good speaker. After that, we're going to walk through the new data. And you'll understand why there's new data if you're not already filled in. In order to save some time, because I've shot this video and edited it numerous times and it's still way too long. Uh, the quick recap is, a week and a half ago, I produced a video for my Tecton Troubadour review. And overall, the review was actually kind of positive wasn't any glaring issues. I had some notes about the upper mid range sounding a bit hot, but that was really it. I published the review and I got an email back from Eric Alexander at Tecton who had some concerns. And one of those was about the measurement angle. So I had already emailed him before asking about how to listen to him. And he provided me with some insight on how to listen to him. So I set them up to be measured that same way. But he said, hey, if I had told him that I was measuring them, then he would have been more specific, right? So, okay, not a big deal. Uh, then he emailed me back and said that I need the feet inserts for the speaker because without those, the threaded portion on the bottom of the speaker are through holes and therefore it makes the enclosure leak out of those through holes. It's a supported enclosure, mind you, but he was concerned that there was additional air going out of those little holes at the bottom. Okay, that was kind of it. That's kind of like where it wrapped up at. There was other back and forth discussion about me potentially reviewing other speakers from him. He suggested that in the future, I provide him with data before I publish anything. I told him that's not how my channel works and that I always try to remain transparent to my audience and that sometimes what I'll do is provide maybe an on-axis result, but I never provide the full suite. And that's where we left things off. So let's pick up from there. Now, this is where things really went off the rails, okay? Aaron, your review puts my work and abilities as a designer in a false light. I have no choice but demand the review be removed and a mea culpa follow-up review be done. Okay. Okay. Now, at this point, I just woken up. I'm about to go to work. I see this email and I'm thinking, what? You know, okay. Let's focus on two things. You said, I implore you to really rely on the data. In my mind, you're saying my measurements can't lie. Next, you show the impedance plot with a 200 hertz bump. It's like 250, actually. And you clearly define it as a cabinet resonance. He's right. In my video review, I pointed a little arrow to it and I said cabinet resonance because uh, based off experience, it's either a standing wave in the cabinet or it's a resonance in the wall, most likely. Those are typically the two things that are going to create a resonance 
in that frequency for a speaker given this size. Continuing on, he says, that's the moment my work, abilities, and reputation is put in a false light through a false narrative created by you. I will not tolerate this and will begin litigation first thing in the morning if your review isn't pulled. Now, I know that Eric has made a video talking about how he's not planning on suing anybody. I didn't watch it because honestly, this all of this crap has stressed me the F out. If you have IBS, I've got IBS. I've lost weight this week in the past week's time. Um, it's been extremely stressful. As soon as I woke up and saw the threat of litigation for a review, rather than just emailing me and saying, hey, Aaron, I see this issue. It doesn't show up in my measurements. Do you mind taking your review down until we can investigate? I'll send you out some feet and we can figure out what's going on. Instead of saying that, I got... I will not tolerate this and will begin litigation first thing in the morning if the review isn't pulled. Put yourself in my shoes for a minute. I'm about to buy a house. I'm a single dad. Well, single dad. I'm a divorced dad. Um, you know, like I've got responsibilities and I'm doing this as a hobby. It generates some extra income on the side, but it's never going to be my main thing. Like it's just not going to do that for me. It, I've been doing this for four years there are channels that have way eclipsed me and I'm never going to reach that. I'm not going to make this my living. It would be cool if I could. It's not going to happen. And then he goes on to say, if you've ever measured a leaky cabinet one time, you would instantly know you were dealing with an air leak when you were faced with my cabinet with no feet in it. So he's saying the leaky cabinet, because of not having these feet installed, caused that 250 hertz. He says 200, but it's 250, closer to 250. Resonance that I called a cabinet resonance. So just... We're going to come back to that. Then he talks about the tweeter, the top and bottom tweeter are just as easy to identify because I measured each individual tweeter in the near field. Now, I wasn't trying to do anything perfectly. And in the graphic, I said near field approximately, I think I said 13 millimeters from the baffle. So if anybody has measured a speaker like that, they know the implication of that. And I said in that video, if the designer of Tecton is watching this, I would be interested to know what these measurements mean. There was no malice. There was nothing bad said. It was, it was a genuine question posed to the manufacturer and giving him the opportunity to come and talk to my audience. Not because just I want to know, but because I think the audience might be interested as well. Your review makes me look like an ass to everyone that's witnessed it. I want it pulled and a mea culpa follow-up done immediately. The mea culpa must be done and it's non-negotiable. That is the person that Eric Alexander is. That's what you're dealing with. That's what Ron at New Record Day dealt with. And that's what Amir at Audio Science Review is currently dealing with. Eric says in some posts and some other videos that he respects me. That's not the talk of a man who respects somebody. I would have taken down my review had he just asked nicely, but he throws in litigation. Keep in mind, the video was actually getting a lot of comments from people saying, oh, it's actually better than I expected. And there are people who have since said, and you can feel free to comment in this video, that they were actually kind of like, oh, that might be a, a legitimate brand to look into. Because of that video, nobody was paying attention to the cabinet resonance at 250 hertz. Seriously, nobody except for Eric. I pointed it out because it's kind of a typical thing, right? It had nothing to do with the feet, and I'm going to prove it to you. But then he goes on, you've been duly informed. Understand that I'm of the opinion that every minute this video is accessible to the public. I'm being personally defamed by your flawed review. How I go forward depends upon the choices you make. Let me know what you plan to do. Now, listen, you can screenshot this, but basically what I did was I sealed up those little feet. I remeasured the speaker. I was an hour and a half late for work because I was stressed the F out trying to figure out what was going on. And I did all that. And then I measured... And then I sent back the results to Eric. And I said, look, dude, it doesn't resolve the 250 hertz issue. It's, it's still there. It doesn't matter if they're open or blocked. Here's the multitone. Here's harmonic distortion. Like those things don't really change much. Obviously, I was trying to work toward a resolution. His reply, I need your mailing address for my legal representation to communicate with you. Respectfully, Eric Alexander. Respectfully. Like, okay, that's ironic. Then I told Eric I wasn't ship the feet with them. And I said, so here's what I gladly will do. If you send me a pair of feet, I'll pull the review as soon as you can provide me notification that they've been shipped to me. Because what I didn't want to do is I didn't want Eric to say, yes, I'm going to ship you the feet. And then he just maybe didn't. He forgot or something like that. 
And then this review sitting out there in limbo and my audience, you all are thinking, well, now shady things are going on because again, they know what Eric is threatening at Audio Science Review toward Amir litigation. And they also know that Ron at New Record Day has had the same kind of thing happen to him where there were threats of litigation and Ron had to pull that review. I said, once I get their feet, I will rerun the test. And, and basically, if I find meaningful difference in the results, I will update my review. Otherwise, I will make it public again. I think that's fair. His response, the damage is done, I said last night, is non-negotiable. I had a $3,300 order canceled last night, and I don't think it's a coincidence. I think my client lost faith in me after watching your review. No. So remember, at the same time, he's already done this once. He's currently on audio science review as of this moment in time, threatening a mirror with litigation. You know, like, I don't think it was my review. People were actually saying that they were surprised it did as well as it did. His resolution was he would personally bring me a pair of Troubadour and I do the measurements while he watches. And then we do a combined segment in which I explain what I was intending to accomplish with the patented design. That's what he said. Then I followed up with Eric. I spoke with the owner of these speakers. He's going to send me out the feet. I'm going to remeasure. And basically, we'll go from there. Now, I told Eric that I was going to take down the review and post something about it because I wanted you all to know why the review was taken down. And here it is. I posted this publicly. The designer at Tecton raised concerns about my test methods because I didn't have the feet for the speaker. I obtained the feet from the owner of the speaker who let me borrow the speakers to begin with, and I was going to retest, and then I would go from there. And I kind of thought that that would be that. There's been a lot of chatter back and forth between myself and Eric, and honestly, most of it kind of seemed like it, like it was scaled back a little bit from Eric's side, but he did send me this email, FYI, I'm now at 6,000 in canceled orders in under 24 hours. I'll let you know when the next one comes in. Guys, I know a veiled threat when I see one. Now, I had previously asked him to clarify a couple things. Do I need to measure at the right point and uh, with the right feet? And do I need to do anything else? And I said, Okay, I see you chose not to clarify your statement on the tweeters, nor provide any additional instructions on measuring these speakers once I get the feet in. I see you are also threatening a mirror at ASR with litigation publicly, and your actions there don't seem to be helping you based on the feedback of users there. So it could be related to any number of things causing you to lose these sales, as you say. I will continue to act with integrity and provide corrected data once I obtain it. I had to follow up with them one more time. I will be out of town this week, and I'm going to remeasure the speakers. Feet installed. New reference point. Is that it? And I also said, if you have your own measurements to compare against, that would be helpful, but not entirely necessary. I'll leave that up to you. Eric replies back, noted, thanks. Overall, that is correct. I'll get the set here finished and provide those measurements to you. But then after a little bit, I got another email from him, which I can't show because it has some sensitive information. But he says, unfortunately, I'm of the opinion we're going to require lawyers to reach an agreement. Please provide me with your legal representative. He gives me his and the phone number. I also believe you and I should have a calm and controlled phone call within minutes, if possible. Dude, I'm working. Like, I'm not just at your whim uh, to find a way to extricate ourselves from this nightmare. Please call me. Now, this was all because some people had caught wind of what was going on, and they made videos discussing how Eric was threatening Amir with litigation. They noticed that my review had been pulled down and they kind of just put two and two together and they were right. So here's what I'm going to do. I've got the speaker on the stand behind me. I'm going to use this. Dayton Debt's about a hundred, maybe 130 bucks, I think, from Parts Express. It will allow me to do a quick impedance sweep. So I'm not even using the Clipple stuff right now. I'm using something entirely different. But check this out. But this is the result. So let me attach the feet to this speaker and then I'll re-sweep it. And here are the results, all right? The W is the new one and green is the previous. So blue is with the feet attached, green is without the feet. You can see a difference near the tuning frequency on the low end. So there is something different. I'm not playing any games, but look at 250 Hertz. See that little bit of a resonance right there? It is still there. But the crazy thing that I found was that if the speaker's turned upside down and it's resting flat on a hard surface, that impedance bump goes away. So hold on. All right, now in purple is what I just tested. The feet are in, the speaker's turned upside down on a flat surface. 
Now, if you look right through here, you can see that that purple doesn't really have that little kick up right there. All right, so now I'm zoomed in. Let me get rid of the phase too. I don't want phase on here. Boo, phase. All right, got rid of the phase. Now we're just looking at the peanut's magnitude. The green was the original. And the purple is with the speaker turned upside down. So I can get rid of the impedance bump or that resonance by turning the speaker upside down and resting it on a flat surface. Now experience tells me, this is opinion, I don't want to get sued. Experience tells me that that likely means that there is a resonance in that top panel. Could be something else, but it seems like by bracing that top panel and providing some extra reinforcement, that resonance at 250 hertz goes away. Are you going to be setting these speakers up to where they're perfectly flat and resting on something like this upside down? Probably not. Now in the grand scheme of things, was that even audible? No. So in my opinion, this is a whole lot of drama about something that I never complained about to begin with. I didn't cite even hearing. I just don't get it. But the data is there. Doesn't matter if I have feet or not. And the only way I can get rid of that is to turn it upside down and to place it on a flat surface. I've spent some time listening to them. Then I tested them and then I listened to them again. I also did a lot of ABX testing against the MoFi Source Point 8 as well as the Kef Blade 2s that I recently reviewed. And of course, it's not fair to compare a $1,000 per pair speaker such as these Troubadours to a $28,000 per pair set of Kef Blade 2s, but I wanted to do that because I wanted to see what stands out the most. In my singular, singular listening sessions, which is what I did at first, what I felt like was that the upper mid range stood out a little bit, but I got to be honest that I never found any real issues, tonally speaking, with these speakers. And it wasn't until I set up the MoFi Source Point 8s against them, like right next to them, and started doing AB switching between the two pairs that it was very apparent how much of an upper mid range lift there is with the Troubadours. Now I'm gonna tell you that I don't know that some people or that everybody would find that problematic. And in my listening sessions, I didn't really have an issue with it per se. Again, it's not like it was something that just jumped out at me and screamed, no pun intended, that it was a problem but it was definitely noticeable. And as far as preference goes, I don't, I don't want that. I don't want any extra embellishment from a speaker. I, I prefer a more neutral speaker overall. I kind of went into this with the predisposed notion that I was gonna hear some pretty significant issues. And overall, I really didn't. So take that for what it's worth. Again, you know, these are subjective thoughts. I would implore you to also really rely on the data. But the subjective is important to me because I'm going to be able to tie some things in that are going to be very apparent in the data. And, and so I really wanted to mention that first. As far as bass extension goes, there's good bass on these. They get down to about 50 hertz in room, maybe a little bit lower depending on your placement. And I think that they probably do what I think most people would expect. Now, these drivers are about five and a quarter inch drivers. The tweeters look like they're one inch dome tweeters. And funny enough, if you go to Tecton's website, and scroll down for description, they've got the size and they've got the weight and they say that it's manufactured in the USA, but they don't tell you anything about the driver sizes. There's nothing in terms of information on this speaker. As you can see, the speakers that I got are in kind of like a, maybe like a sea foam greenish blue. I really don't know what color you'd call it, but I got to tell you that I think it looks great. I really like this color personally. And I really like the finish on these speakers. I was moving these around between rooms on the clipple, setting them on the floor, and then moving other speakers in their place. I mean, I moved these speakers around a lot throughout the span of about a week. And the cool thing about it is they don't have fingerprint all over them. There's not a whole bunch of spots where you can see my fingerprints. Before I even started listening to these speakers, I emailed Tecton 
the day I got them in. And I said, hey, basically, how are these speakers designed to be listened to? And I got an email within 10 or 15 minutes. I was surprised, actually, because it was kind of later in the afternoon. And I was told that the reference axis is at the middle tweeter and that they should ideally be aimed to be combined at about four feet behind the listening position. So I did that. But naturally, I played around with other positions, toe in and toe out, and then moving them close to the wall, sitting up and down, kind of seeing, you know, where is the sweet spot on this speaker? I know I'm told it's at the tweeter, but how bad is it when you go above the tweeter to the next tweeter? And at about 10 feet or so, you know, moving with my eyes being pointed at the top tweeter, I didn't really hear a difference in overall tonality. But as soon as I stood up, you can hear a huge difference. Now, I don't know what that angle is from me sitting down to standing up, but if I had to guess, I'd say it's about 40 degrees. Most two-way speakers, well, I would say that most non-coaxial speakers don't have a vertical range of more than 20 to 30 degrees, kind of if they're lucky. Every once in a while, I'll come across a speaker that bucks that as a standard two or three-way design and not a coaxial. So I don't necessarily expect them to have that same kind of tonality when I'm standing up. But it is worth noting that if you veer off of that tweeter axis, that middle tweeter axis too much, then you are going to hear a pretty significant difference in the overall tonality. In my listening, the one thing that I continued to notice was that upper mid-range, how it just stood out in the forefront. And switching back and forth between the Troubadours and the MoFi 8s, and even the Kef, but I mean, let's, we can just set the Kef off to the side. You can talk about just the MoFi 8s, which are on sale now for like $2,200 or so. So even though they are more expensive, it's not crazy more expensive. And it's a linear speaker. That's why I chose to use that in my listening. So when doing that comparison, just subjectively speaking, what I felt like was that the mid-range of the Troubadour stood out just right in the forefront. And it felt like there wasn't a lot of extra energy other than just in that mid-range. Compared to the MoFi where it was mid-range, right? I mean, of course it's got mid-range, but there was other stuff. So it didn't make it sound like it was what I would consider maybe upper mid-range heavy. We're going to talk about that in the data. And speaking of the data, let's go ahead and jump into that. And I'm going to kind of blitz this because the rest of the data will be on my website and I've spent enough time talking about this. Again, I want to reiterate that I measured this speaker without the feet the first time by accident. I didn't know any better. And then I measured it with the feet the second time. Here's the impedance from the Clipple data. You can see the 250 Hertz resonance is still there, right there. If I turn the cabinet upside down and place it on a flat surface, as you saw on the Dayton Dats data, it gets rid of that and smooths it right out. It's very interesting. Nobody's gonna be listening to the speaker flat upside down on a large table. I can't imagine. Most likely it's gonna be book stands or something like that. So keep this information in mind. Now let's talk about the on-axis frequency response. The way I measured it the first time was at the middle tweeter axis without the feet. And that's what you see here in black. Now, when I changed the reference axis and I was going to update my website with this information, this is what you see in blue. So let me bring up black and blue. All right, so there is a difference. There, there's a little bit of a difference here. Uh, the blue with the no feet, but between the mid woofers, the mid range drivers, it looks kind of the same. Honestly, the black looks a little bit more linear to me, but I could be convinced the other way around. So now let's see what happens when I talk about the no feet versus the feet measurement between the midwoofers. Here's what you get. Pretty much the exact same thing on the top end and some difference on the low end. And I do expect some of that to be the case. So this sanity checks out for me. The base is a little bit more shelled, a little bit more steep in the roll off but it extends maybe a little bit lower, not a whole lot, but a little bit lower. The standard clipple data, I'm gonna blitz through this. Frequency response on axis still looks good. Not a lot changed from the previous measurement and it still looks good. I mean, it's not perfect. There is a bit of a shelf below about 300 Hertz. As I said previously, you could probably put a little bit closer to the wall and increase that, maybe get a little bit more bass out if you feel it might be a little bit thin when it's pulled too far out from the wall. So keep that in mind. CEA 2034 data. Overall, I think this is a speaker that you could probably EQ to get rid of some of the issues that I had, which are shown here. 
in the estimated in-room response. Now in my listening, what I noted was that there is a wide Q elevation at around 4K, so it extends from about 2K to 8K. And to me, this wasn't necessarily terrible, but it did call attention to itself because it made the top end just stand out, maybe sound a little bit more front and center in the upper mid range. And that's not something I cared for. The falling treble is certainly an objective finding that's interesting as well. And in my opinion, it definitely makes this upper mid range area stand out even more. You know, when, when the treble is falling down, then you're basically left with more mid range. Horizontal radiation, asymmetrical, asymmetrical design. Vertical radiation is pretty narrow, about plus or minus 20 degrees. Harmonic distortion to 86 decibels, and then at 96 decibels. This did change a little bit from my previous measurement due to the feet, and you see a little bit more of a dip in the, around that 50 hertz region where the saddle of the tuning frequency is for the enclosure. Multitone distortion, still high. So the multitone didn't really change. And, and the mid-range, upper mid-range area didn't change. And I wouldn't expect it to with the little feet being sealed. It shouldn't make any difference at all. And if it had, then I would have questioned everything I knew about life. My aerospace engineering degree would have just gone out the window. Now this really only applies at higher output volumes. And Eric told me that these are four inch mid-range drivers. So I'm not really bothered by four inch mid-range drivers having higher multi-tone distortion. This is a compression and I'd say based on this, about 20 decibels of dynamic range is probably what you could get from the speakers. This has been an extremely stressful week. Uh, it's just it's just been really tough, honestly. Um, and I don't wish this kind of stuff upon anybody. You know, we can say things like, I wasn't threatened to be sued, but I was threatened with litigation and there's a difference. That's That's dumb. And I think that this kind of information needs to be brought to light. So hopefully it won't happen to other reviewers. Now, can I make mistakes? Absolutely. Am I happy to fix those mistakes? For sure. Just go about it the right way. If you're a manufacturer and you see I've done something wrong, let me know. The last thing I want is bad information. I, if I can control it, I will, and I will make sure that I get it right, and I will issue an apology or an update or something to let people know that I screwed up. Please hold on and wait, and I'll take care of it. I'll get it right. And that's what's important here getting it right. That does it for this review. It's ridiculously long, I know, but I hope that you understand why. I hope that you can understand why I kind of laid out everything I've laid out because I'm trying to future-proof myself and also to help this from happening to other people. There is definitely a right way to do things and there's a wrong way to do things. I hope that I've done them the right way, but we'll see. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all of your support. If I could thank each one of you individually, you know that I would. If you see me at a show coming up soon, please stop by and say, hey, I'll be on the lookout for friends and I'll be on the lookout for enemies so I can stay away. All right, we will see y'all on the next one. And by the way, I never want to hear anything about Tecton for the rest of my life. I'm done. I'm done. So don't please don't ask me if I'm going to be reviewing more Tecton speakers. I know you'll do it in jest for a while, but just remember this in a few years from now. Don't be asking me anymore. All right. Talk to y'all later. Peace.